it may be hard to do, but life is the teacher. And when you look closely, everything directs you and everybody toward this truth, this liberation, toward enlightenment. Everything is driving you toward your true nature. For example, all objects of desire are a hindrance, everything. You may console yourself because you are not a billionaire with a toy boy or a bimbo living in a vulgar house or holidaying on your own personal ocean liner. But desire takes many different forms and the decisive factor from the spiritual point of view is not vulgarity, volume, size, amount or obviousness. It's attachment. Whatever you're attached to, you're still attached. You may point out all the things in your life that don't matter, that aren't important, in an attempt at genuine humility, but inevitably you settle on some kind of ego compromise. You say, I'm not attached to anything except my kids, my home life, my lover. But is even this really, really true? In the ancient Upanishads, we can read, it is not for the love of a husband that a husband is dear, but for the love of the soul in the husband that a husband is dear. It is not for the love of a wife that a wife is dear, but for the love of the soul in the wife that the wife is dear. It is not for the love of children that children are dear, but for the love of the soul in children that children are dear. It is not for the love of all that all is dear, but for the love of the soul in all, that all is dear. The love of the soul is your longing for truth, for liberation in the divine. All else of necessity, because of its nature, will die. It will be taken from you or you will be taken from it. Your relationship to the soul of the divine is the only real thing of lasting value because it transcends birth and death. What you love and are attached to in this world is also divine and ultimately this is what makes it precious. What are your relationships without that inner essence? Depth and orientation to what is constant, to the endlessly loving, to the eternally caring. What are they but the vacillating dynamics of an emotional helter-skelter? Emotions, attachments, fear and ego are not feasible bases for authentic relationship. Only the divine is. If the ego compromise is in creature comforts like TV, wine, overindulgence, chocolate, you can work with your relationship, addiction and attachment through your spiritual discipline. If it's chocolate, for example, hold it a centimeter from your tongue. This is a wonderful sadhana. You entice yourself with a desired object and you hold it in position just before it collides with your ego. 
a cup of tea steaming under your nose, an attractive body lying just beneath your hands, the pounding salty ocean inviting you into its freshness on a hot summer's day as you sit quietly on the beach. Stay with it as long as it takes for you to become a witness to your attachment. Repulsion is the other side of attachment. The other side, not the opposite. Transcending the opposites may be comparatively easy when you feel immense repulsion or attraction. They are so close, much closer than you want them to be. As well as the meditation on desire, holding the desired object in position just before your satiation with it. There is the meditation on repulsion. These exercises are based on age-old spiritual practices and they are powerfully aimed at releasing you from the desire body. Sometimes I think my life was charmed when I was fairly young I worked as a nurse. Male nurses in those days worked on all male wards and were assigned all procedures below the waist, anything to do with the anus or the genitals. Not surprisingly, perhaps, I took to this work. It seemed to me to be an opportunity to care, to be kind, to engage in sacredness, in some of the most intimate areas of the human body. And I made it my mission to be extremely skilled at the procedures. I took great pride in being able to administer pre-med injections with the minimum of distress or physical pain. And similarly, with urinary catheterizations, enemas, manual evacuation of the bowel, and the laying out of dead bodies. As natural and somehow appropriate to my life as all this was, I did sometimes think to myself, what on earth am I doing? Other people had ordinary jobs, with pens and paper, cars and desks, and here I am up to my elbows in human waste. Blood and needles, illness, death. Sometimes it was overwhelming. This, my ordeal, was given to me. I was blessed. I consider my nursing days a tantric practice of releasing attachments and being given great spiritual insight into surrender. Find some way to become aware of your attractions and repulsions your clinging and attachments in your own life. Sometimes ways are given, at other times we go in search of them. For the process of surrender requires single focus, great energy and personal commitment. <laughs>